Good evening. This is the Rutland Town Planning Commission. It's June 1st of 2023. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the meeting, calling it to order, and let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the United States, to the Hi, Dana. Hi, Dana. So approval of the agenda. Um, I did make a mistake on the public comment. We will certainly, if anyone wants to talk about short-term rentals, but public comment tonight is not only on the short-term rentals. So it really should just read public comment. Okay. And we can delete the rest. Um, I had a question about whether there's going to be any uh, discussion on the old business of the uh, update on the subdivision or no, because I didn't see that there. I have an update for you. But... So should we include that on the um, old business? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. A motion Thank to approve you. with the changes. I'll, for, I'll second. Oh, great. Any discussion? I think we've gotten everything, all the changes we need. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Post? Aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that was a delay. It was that a delay? Aye. That was a, a Zoomism. Delay, yeah. So we're, we are at public comment, um, not quite at the subdivision yet. That's next. Um, but is, is there some, would you like to speak to the group tonight? Um, well, or do you have some questions? Okay. Um, and so could and could you give your start with your name? I'm sorry. Start with your name, if oh, you would. Melody Hemingway. I was here at the last meeting, and um, I I have a copy of the minutes. I was just wondering. First of all, is this the same draft as the last meeting, or is this a revised one from the? Did internet? you get that from the website? Huh? You got that on the website. Yeah. Then that's the same. Nothing, nothing been, nothing's been changed yet. Oh, nothing's been changed right. yet. Okay, that was the question. But um, anyway, um, I was just looking at the purpose of this one here, and I thought um, the purpose of the ordinance and uh, because of fire safety, the fireman over here, the police chief that was here. And Excuse me, is she close enough to the mic for? Can, can you guys hear her? No. Andy, you got your hand up. Can yes. Would you ask her to, to move in front of the microphone, please, Barbara? It's I don't I can't hear her well at all. What we can do, uh, just in case, Norm, we'll, we'll put you in this chair. No, oh, they, okay. We'll just put you right here. <clears throat> so I, I guess we're going with the same. Uh, draft that was last time. So the purposes we, have not we, changed at all. We do have an updated one. The town attorney but it's, has gone through it. And, and that's later on in the agenda. Oh, is it going to be on the passed out for people to see? or uh, the, new draft? the members have a copy, but it's the first time we've, we've looked at it. We've so seen. you're not ready for us to look at it to question anything? A difference not really. The last one and this one. Okay, so I, I just won't talk about what I was going to then because it may have changed. Okay. Um, well, you can certainly mention what you yeah. have as a concern and then we can discuss that when we when we look at our version. Okay, um, so anyway, because the police chief was here and the fire people were here um, and there was um, no issues about what the concerns were in the purpose, um, I just, I just don't know if my, I have an Airbnb in my home. Mm -hmm. And so I'm familiar with the way things go. And it's, and it's, I hate to think about having an ordinance where it's really not necessary. And if it's a matter of the 1% tax, pay the tax, but I, I just can't even think about having someone come for a few days and then have all this paperwork and fines and fees, the state of Vermont, the fire department, everybody coming in and checking out. I, 
I can check it out. I live there all the time. Mm-hmm. If I had an issue, I would call the police. Like it's no different than if you had friends and family come to stay at your house for a short length of time. And then you had an ordinance that you had guidelines to fill out when it's not needed. And one reason we went with Airbnb was that the long-term rental problem is so huge. Um, I, I guess there's no controlling it. People can come and trash a place and leave it a mess and have, and there's no recourse like the Holiday Inn. So I, I just, um, and the other thing I didn't notice that um, I know Stephanie Cornell was here as well that gave a lot of information because she manages Airbnbs and but no meeting was set up to discuss anything with her or the other lady that was from no early. no we didn't take any action after the hearing three weeks ago we're going to be discuss we're going to be discussing it tonight as a group so you'll be contacting them I don't know I don't know what the group is going to come up with sorry. No, I'm not sure. We're, we're, we're going to discuss this tonight and talk about next steps. Oh, okay. We don't right. know what they are at this point. All right. um, and, and the other question I have is there was a mention in the minutes about the uh, approximately $3,000 uh, fee for a, a vendor to monitor all of this. And I was just wondering where that figure came from. Um, Seems like it would cost a lot of money to go do everything that's in this thing here for, I don't know how many Airbnbs there are. Yeah. I don't think there's that many. Yeah, it was based on how many we think they are and what the going rate is for that kind of service. So it's like... Okay, I can address that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's kind of two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the three thousand dollars is not a company that's going to manage the ordinance for us. That's not what that's that's not going. There's no company that's going to do that for us. Oh, the three thousand dollars was to hire a vendor that they uh, give us a report on Airbnb usage in the town once a week. For, How did they get that? They go on Airbnb. They they go they they. It's not just Airbnb. They go on. There's about thirty. There's about 30 to 35 short-term rental sites out there. Mm -hmm. They go through all of them. These are variety of data and metrics to determine ones that make sure they're ones that are in the town and we cross-reference our information to make sure the addresses line up. But they identify short-term rental property usage in the town for us. That's what that's for. They determine what? Short-term rental property usage. Usage, okay. Like so like if you list your house on Airbnb, and you listed on VRBO and you listed on, you know, all these different sites, we would get a report that says this property is on all these different sites. Oh, okay. So that's, that's what that's, that's what they do. So who would, would monitor all the, it's in the ordinance. It, it would be bill. L- largely me. It would be bill. It would be the health officer. It would be the yeah. fire chief and the police. The chief. fire chief doesn't really, the division of fire safety would, is involved, but the fire department is not actually involved in in managing the ordinance. Yeah, there's, you know, How there's, did you happen to come up with the Airbnb, this whole thing, the select board, it was all their idea to check it out? It was actually my idea. And why was that? Um, based upon things I've seen in other towns and talking to the towns, and they said, you know, we, we didn't realize how many we had until we started to just have a bunch of people ask questions about it and they had some issues. So we looked at what's the what's you know better and that was one of the topics brought up the other night is well if there's no problem why do we need an ordinance and you know if there if we found there was a problem managing short-term rentals it's a, it's a six to eight to ten month process from beginning to an ordinance being into effect so if we find out tomorrow we have a problem we're starting from square one it could be it be in the next year before we could actually do anything to identify it. So okay, I'm, I'm going to step yeah. in sure. now. This is a regular meeting. Yeah. We, we had the the public meeting three weeks ago. You're you're welcome this to stay a, and is, listen. This is the same thing as last week. No, 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 oh, no. Not? This is a regular planning commission oh, meeting. Okay, We've got sorry. some folks I... here who want to do a subdivision. We've got some other things on our agenda. Oh, okay, so I kind of have to move things along. You're welcome to stay. Yeah, no, I we just will. I just had questions on that, and I was just wondering 
Uh, okay, then when would you be having another meeting for like last week for public? We we may or may not have another public meeting. If we'll talk about that tonight if, if someone wants to. Uh, I mean, I just, I won't. I, I don't. We had a pretty enough. lengthy public meeting three weeks ago. Yes, and so I just was wondering. Okay, I guess it is what it is. Um, you're you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to to we no. we use the public comment usually when it's not a public meeting. We try to restrict it to two minutes so we can keep our agenda going. And so you're going to go back to the select board with the information you received last. We will be talking tonight about what we will do for next okay. steps. Yep. Yeah. And you're welcome to stay and listen to our I debate. It's not about the, um, the Airbnb. That was smart. It will, well, it will be. It, it's oh, it's well, on the agenda. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll stay then. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. So, and I don't see any other public. So we can move down um, to new business which be, would be the Cluxton subdivision. And if you wouldn't mind just coming up and maybe moving those chairs over, so we can... It's the people on Zoom and the, the meetings being recorded by local public access. So. so we have got uh, everyone should have a, a, a preliminary plat in front of them um and you should have received um the beginnings of form one being filled out in the cover letter from the collections so just to make sure you've got those materials and then i'll turn it over to you to just kind of give us an overview uh, so, um, I am, uh, Bonnie Cluxton, my husband, David, and I currently live in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, and I grew up here in Rutland. I went to Christ the King and MSJ and, uh, my parents, um, uh, my late parents' home is at 349 Killington Avenue. Um, it sits on a, um, a lot that's about seven acres or so. Um, when, um, my mom passed away, she left the uh, property in a trust. Um, and my husband and I would like to buy two acres of the seven and build our home there. Um, and, um, and we are both retired and plan to spend our retirement years here in Rutland. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome. <laughs> so um we've got the um the contiguous property owners listed on here we've got the plat the preliminary plat so if yeah go ahead and look at that if we can just go down this list as a group here so barbara when they came in there were no waivers everything was everything was a yes in there so yeah. we could talk about that may not actually be accurate or appropriate okay. so we may need to check off some of those as a waiver okay and we, we, we i had to talk to them about why for some of the bigger ones like all the trees yeah. so yeah. we did talk about some of those things so we should probably check off some of the ones that need to be okay checked. thank you right yeah. well let's go through the plat first um so number one is boundaries and area of contiguous property of owner. I think that's on there. Uh, yeah. Hi, yep, I didn't use, if there are one, there are nine contiguous properties. One, two. Three. From the listing on here, so. they're on they're on both sides, mm -hmm. uh, all the way around. Oh, on this side over here, mm -hmm. oh, right side chapel was that? That's the, right. The whole um, and then there's uh, another East property um, on that? Kelly on the east oh, side. Kelly. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there's one. Yep. Got it. Thank you. So we okay with that one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, boundaries and area of property subdivided. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, proposed subdivision lines, <clears throat> name and address of professional preparer, yep. numerical and graphic scale of plan date and north arrow. Yep. Let's do it on that one. Uh, number six, existing features and facilities, including roads, public utilities, and utility easements, wooded areas, structures, water courses, ledge, wet areas, accessibly steep slopes. Soon we can to our own, so. Yeah, basically. It's Isn't that one that we play pretty routinely wave. wave? Unless there's something real dramatic, mm -hmm. like a really steep ledge, and there, there, there isn't. Me. Okay. And, yeah, the next one is um, sometimes a little problematic. To propose improvements, including roads, utilities, and utility easements, and rights of way and structures. It is on there, though, isn't it? So, yeah, it is. And the location map, I saw that, yeah. Okay. So, we're looking at, because of their um, summer schedule, we're looking at uh, the final hearing being uh, a few meetings off. Uh, it'll be August 3rd. Right. right. You still, mm -hmm. still want that. Um, and we can take a look at the waivers. This will be a minor subdivision. Um, and which you said yes for all of, this will be for the final plat requirements. Um, do you know offhand, or do you have a, a copy of this to, to tell us which ones you may want to waiver on. We don't. And, you know, and I, and I will say when I spoke with John LaPre, who put the plat together for us, I asked whether I should, um, how I should respond to those questions. And he, he looked and said, based on what he put together, he said, just, just reply. Yes. Which I realized now was, was not, not correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was easily, Easily done. Um, let's see which ones we can take a quick look at this. I identified five myself. I don't know if that will be helpful or not. Yeah, which ones, Dana? Uh, seven, 18, 19, 22, and 25. That was just from my perspective, quickly going over. Okay. And those sound like familiar numbers. Yes. Yeah. Um, seven. Seven is the identification of zoning districts applicable to the area to be subdivided and the entire tract. Um, that would be a waiver because we don't have zoning. Mm -hmm. um, 18, the location of all trees on site. Are there many trees? Many. Too many? Um, 19, all information specified. Uh, in 9 through 18, with respect to adjacent land of owner and with respect to adjacent land of others to a distance of 100 feet. Why did you check that one? Because it includes the same things that are in uh, in 18 in yeah. terms of trees and things. So if we're uh, granting an exemption, or if they're requesting a, a waiver for 18, then they would have to request a waiver from 18 because we're waiving the same things. That's the only rationale. That gets us every time. Um, and number uh, number 22, if a private sewage disposal is required, it should comply with Vermont statute. That it wasn't identified. That's why I, I circled that. I wasn't sure whether they were doing private sewage. We, we, we have waiver. permits. Those permits are mm -hmm. have been completed and are somewhere here in the building. We <laughs> don't need a waiver for that. I don't think we do. No. Right. No. That was just my question. <laughs> yep, that's know. that's fine, Dan. That's that. fine. And number 25, requested waivers, variances, and the reasons therefore. <laughs> yes or no. Um, th that's not really a waiver. 
Uh, no, but if they were asking for a waiver, they would have to have a rationale. And if we don't have the waiver, then we don't have the rationale. Therefore, I flagged 25. Right. Norm. Yeah. Apologize for being late. Um, I used to live, this property is France on Killington Avenue. On Killington Avenue. And how far from the intersection with Talon Road? Uh, two driveways down, across from Sunset Drive. Okay, so it's on the... It's north side. As you're going up Killington Avenue. It's on the left. It's on the left. Okay. I, just, I lived on, I didn't remember what it is now, East Ridge Terrace for oh, yeah. a while. So I, right. Okay. So this is the wooded area between the last house at Killington. That's right. And, and um, at, Columbus. And Columbus. Mm -hmm. You have a question, Norm? No, I just was trying to identify the, <laughs> the property, make sure I, I hadn't. Age hadn't robbed me of my hammer. <clears throat> Any decision? I'm sorry. <clears throat> Never mind. Uh, getting back to 25. Yeah. Uh, since we will be requesting at least two waivers, we will need the rationale that goes along with that. That's so that. we're looking at waivers for 7, 18, 19, 19 yep, so and then the explanation of 25. And usually, if you just come with a verbal description, okay. um, I don't think any of those mean entail changing the plat at all. No. So, yeah, okay. so like you can write it out or we can do it verbally sure. at the final hearing. Okay. And the final plat, Bill, the um, dimensions are on there. Yep. 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 This is just proposed. This isn't surveyed yet. They haven't, they haven't set the monuments yet. That's right. Right. That's right. This is this is a proposal. There'll be they've got to actually survey it and show the monuments the ones they're setting. And actually, the final plat um, is not due until three weeks, three months, ninety days, 90 days <clears throat> after. If you get approval on the third. Okay. But we do need a final survey. W within the 90 days after the third? That's the final plat. Um, we would like to see the, the official survey at the final, at the hearing. At the, the hearing. Third. We need it for the hearing, the final survey. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else that we... So, okay, we'll meet at uh, uh, the same time, 6.30 p.m. on the 3rd. Okay. And so um, just so I make sure we get to you what you need, the, you need a final survey and a, and a final plat. A final plat. You can wait to do that to see if you get, you know, approval. Okay. Or you can do it any, you, you could do it at any point if you want. Okay. Okay. Because um, that's not due at the hearing, the final plat. Do you need the survey in advance of the meeting? Yeah. Um, well. We don't have to. I mean, if it is ready, to send it to Bill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> as long as as long as we have it at the meeting, we have copies. Okay. Yeah. Like the day of it, okay, but close. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. Any other questions? Advice. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. And hopefully we've answered all of your questions. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Very comprehensive. We sometimes get mm -hmm. um, paperwork that is not quite as complete, so we want to commend you for um, having done due diligence, mm -hmm. even though you didn't know it. Was. <laughs> that, that's why you have it here. So. Great. Thanks so much. Welcome. Yeah. Have a good night. There, um, there is one question I have. For them? On the slide. Do you uh, plan a site visit up there when uh, I don't we get all the paperwork together? I don't know if it's necessary for a minor subdivision like this. We haven't been doing site We haven't done it on sub on minor subdivisions. We have not. Okay. Oh. If you're comfortable with uh, the information that's on the papers. I think so. Everybody good with that? 
It's yep. just carving out a, a, a section of the already existing. Already existing uh, parcel. Parcel. Right. By then, they should have the approval of the septic and everything right. in the state. Everything should be approved by the state. For the and it would be helpful to have that at the at, yeah. uh, at the final yep. hearing as well. And just so that you said that um, your husband said that uh, that that was already taken care of. So we can just have a copy for us that we can then check it off. It would just make it a little more efficient and let the meeting move. Norm. And, and the well location. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They have to be a certain distance apart. So, of course, has the state already seen this subdivision? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, not the subdivision itself, but they have. They have seen the, the request for the septic mm -hmm. and the well, and they've seen the drawings and they have approved it. And it was recorded so you, here in the town some months ago. Mm. So, so they're they're aware that you're going to subdivide. Correct. And where you're going to be. Okay. Yeah. In fact, when we recorded the the permits here in the town hall, we it might have been from Bill. I'm not sure. We we got a letter mm -hmm. saying. Hey, we got these permits. You realize you have to subdivide, which we did. Yeah. But so. I sent that to you. I oh, sent you something once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks again. All right. Yeah. Thank you. If you have any questions, Bill's the one to go to. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Lost my agenda here. Here it is. So uh, just a reminder, um, since we have a couple people on Zoom, um, just make sure that preferably you get recognized by the chair. Um, and we want to make sure anyone who wants to speak up, you know, from the audience is near a mic too. So we've run into a few issues where those who are on Zoom have not been able to hear everything. So, Norm, did you have a question? Okay. So, let's go down to um, old business, and we'll take up the the new um, short-term rentals ordinance um, that you all should have a copy of. Um, this is with the town attorney additions. And, Bill, can you give us a, a synopsis of all of the many changes that he made, um, are, none of them are really substantive. So in, in, in short, Kevin had a, a lot to say about it, but it only it resulted in a few changes. Uh, it actually removed some some things altogether. So um, I didn't I didn't do a, a comparison copy. It just it was it was, it was kind of got kind of difficult. But um, the copy you have reflects all the changes. It, it was things that um he gave we fixed some statutory references uh he added def definitions for us once once we were looking for um we had one one of them we had was adverse impact and he said it does not need to be defined because it's part of the purpose it's it does need to be defined so that that line came out um we cleaned up um some other ones, like short-term rental, we referenced the statute for the definition because if their definition changes, ours automatically does. So that that helps. Um, uh, we linked, we we cleaned up. We got definition for occupant. Um, we said some th things to eliminate and, and things to eliminate and very valid reasons why because they're just either redundant or not necessary. So they're just gone. Um, like compliance with applicable laws, he's like, it's a given, they have to. So that whole section just comes out. So that, that was an easy one. Um, um, we changed the order of some things in section seven. He says the prior, like to give it a better priority, we move some things up and up and down the list. Um, and long explanation why. Uh, we talked to, he talked about, um, having the uh, inspection by division of fire safety a prerequisite of applying so which which does make sense that you know one's going to come first and i think that makes sense so in, in thinking about that i think we probably will push 
for this being effective till like maybe like next summer to give that a chance to kind of work its way through. So they would need proof of that. Yeah, that, that would be a prerequisite. So, yep. Um, and I got I got a comment on that in a second. Um, and he said to a couple things on on um, section eight, which was enforcement. He says, get rid of waivers. He's like, they don't do any good. They're ambiguous. They can lead to confusion and and inconsistent application. He's like, just just get rid of them. He says it causes more problems than it solves. So we took those out. Uh, and he also said to um, that we had in there that like basically they the the cum, the cumulative effect ended at the end of a year. He's like, get rid of that. He's like, it, just, it lets people that are not doing things correctly just kind of reset every, every year. He's like, get rid of that. So that's that's gone. Um, and we added a section on uh, revoking a permit for for a couple of reasons. So that that's that's a new section at the end. Uh, that's a new eight. Yeah. So, like so this is all renumbered and reorganized. Um, I after and after getting his comments and thinking about the inspection should come before registration, which that that's updated in there as well. Um, I reached out to uh, we had one of the inspectors for fire safety come by and talk to me about about the stuff, um, which also isn't here. Their view on inspections is we they want to review them all. So I had put some just pre preliminary language in there about a, a dwelling unit capacity of six or more requires it. He's like, I don't, we don't care. We want to, we want to inspect them all once. If there's a complaint, if it, you know, if we say if, if, if a renter has a complaint, if we have an issue, then they can go back. But he said, once we're, once we're good, we're good. So there, we could be talked about, there was some, uh, so other towns require like annually he's like it becomes too much they can't do it which which totally makes sense so he says once they're once they have it inspected we are good unless there's a complaint so this uh, inspection would be looking for like sprinklers and all, yeah all their fire all their criteria and... yeah their their criteria um so i i reached back out to 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 matt who's the inspector and i said hey you guys are doing one in the area can I tag along and see what you guys look for? He's like, absolutely. So the next time they get one in the area, I'm going to go with them and see what it's all about. It doesn't go. To be scheduled. <laughs> Dana. Um, I had flagged that section because uh, I my question was, what is the frequency? Yep. And um, I think that we could clarify that by saying, uh, section it's section well it's section six uh paragraph 10 okay it's on the uh, page eight i mean they're not numbered but oh, yeah. Yeah, I know that. um <clears throat> um so i just had a question there and i think we can clarify that that there's initial inspection is required uh subsequent inspections would only be required if there were complaints or something so like you want that to change additional to subsequent uh let me read it again which one are we on uh, section okay. 10, it's at the top seven, of the page. Section six, yeah. number oh, excuse 10. me, section six, six, number 10. Number 10. The property owner shall right contact the seven. Division of Fire Safety it's for right inspection. Ten. Sorry. Having a completed inspection clarifying compliance is a requirement for the application. Additional inspections will be required if a complaint is filed. Um, I, I guess in reading that, it, it didn't indicate that uh, an inspection was only required once ever unless there were maybe it was my reading of it or could couldn't it just say at the end of that or says required with the application process couldn't it say that this inspection is only required one time unless that right that's that's what i was additional inspections yeah i mean that was or, the, or yeah will only be required one time and then additional inspections will be required. this is a one-time requirement right. unless However, yeah i mean then, right. then give the reasons why right okay. yep I mean, that, that was like an additional sentence there, right. just adding or at least a clause within the sentence. But it, it just it caused me to think about whether it could be. So on, on, like only one inspection will be required unless an additional one is needed for the following reasons. Unless right. unless a, a complaint is unless filed. a complaint is filed, the property changes owners or things. I mean, that line is exactly is fine. It was just not clear in my mind if this was an annual, uh, or a biannual, or a five-year, or yep. 
So he so. says he says they're one and done, which which is fine. Like that that yeah. that's, that right. makes sense. I mean, yeah. that's I think it kind of resolves a lot of the issue around that. So. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I I like that. It was just a question that I had when yeah. I was reading it. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Looking forward to going on. <laughs> so we've we've got a new draft. We've had a public meeting. We had um, 22. I, I, I redid the numbers. And with some of the couples that were here, we had 22 people um, at the <laughs> hearing three weeks ago. Two were from out of town. And seven spoke against the ordinance of the 20 slash 22. Um, and you know the the arguments were that it was an undue burden, and or that it was too much like zoning for a town without zoning. So I think we've got we probably have a number of options in front of us. Um, once um, Bill makes those corrections or those additions, um, we could send. We could vote to send the ordinance to the select board. We could, other options would be to edit it a little bit more. And Andy, I see your hand, just a sec. Um, and then another option would be possibly to set up a committee and get some outside people to help us work through. Uh, Andy first. Uh, you're muted, Andy. Am I on the air now? Yeah. Uh, I've thought an awful lot about this since the last meeting. And I'm still definitely, most definitely in favor of the ordinance personally. Um, however, I think that the fees are going to be a major roadblock in having this passed. And I think that the town would be better served to have fees that are an absolute minimum so that people will comply with this ordinance. Because to me, the, 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 some of the different things that we listed as, as purpose are valid, but really the, the two core issues are public safety for the renter of that particular <laughs> piece of property and collection of, of the municipal tax. And this does take care of that. And so to tell you the truth, I would, favor zero fees to start with to get everyone to register with keeping the fines high as they are. Um, certainly the fines are, if we're going to charge $500 for a four bedroom um, rental property uh, annually, um, having fines of $500 is certainly not uh, unrealistic for non-compliance. So that, that is my, my, what I would suggest for changes here is that we, I'm sure I would be in favor of anything from zero, but certainly a absolute minimum amount to encourage everyone to, uh, to be in compliance with this ordinance. And get the fire safety inspection. Yes. Oh, absolutely. All that, that is um, and from day one. Yeah. Before before one room is occupied, uh, it should be fire safety inspected. It, it I, I think it should be noted, and certainly Bill would be able to better speak this than I am. An awful lot of our housing stock in Rutland Town is pre nineteen eighty, which means it really doesn't even have to have. It could conceivably not have any smoke detectors inside it at all. Uh, it doesn't seem logical in this day and age, but it, it's it's quite possible. So uh, it, it, I think that inspection before the first day of occupancy, before the first day of rental, is extremely important. Uh, Bill, we yeah. Want so, to say so Andy, you're absolutely right. I mean, every uh, uh, numerous times when we go to to houses for alarms, the detectors are usually out of date or not enough of them. So you're, you're absolutely right. That that's an important aspect of it. The fee schedule, so that was complete, I will, and I've, I said this, it's completely arbitrary. 
that it's kind of what in line with what, what a lot of other towns have. But you know, if we want to say fifty and fifty, that's fine. The the intent. So Andy, just just so you know, the intent was to make sure that any costs we had that came from this ordinance, such as hiring that vendor for three thousand dollars, that we would be able to cover those costs, so there would be no extra costs for the the taxpayers. So I no, I, I understand the the zero, but I think maybe maybe we do you know we do fifty and fifty. I I don't, I don't know. I mean I you know what what the right number is, but fifty is a flat fee and fifty per bedroom. Yeah, and that, and that's fine. So I did I did some quick math and and that would still it would cover it by a by a small margin. So we we could do that. But um, that that was why Andy was that that we wanted to make sure that when we put the ordinance into effect we were intending to sign an agreement with, with the vendor for the research and those costs would be 100% covered by those fees. Andy, any response? Yeah, I I, I, I fully agree with what, what everything you've said and I realize that that's where you went uh, from. So I think that what we should do is just open a dialogue as, I mean, I, I just set myself at zero just because that's where it could start. And we certainly have um, the fees that we have in there now, but I think we should really talk about them. And because the, what we really want here is compliance. And the more people that are doing these, and if we double the number of, of uh, homes that are uh, doing Airbnbs and the number is say 60 to 100, which I think is a realistic number in Rutland Town, um, we really don't have to have the fees that high to cover the $3,000 a year expense for the monitoring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So Norm, did you? yeah. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. I have, I just have some of my customary nitpicking editorial changes and I think I'll just give them to Bill. And yeah. Yeah. Let's keep this time. higher level right now. Um, yeah. yeah. That would be great. Um, yeah. Jim. <clears throat> the last meeting in the, <clears throat> excuse me, that I attended, Bill indicated that there were some 30 properties or 30 locations in the town that he knew about. Um, would there be any, well, explain that a little further. I believe that when the inspection process is finished, that you're going to find some other things in this packet that are going to probably want to be changed or amended. And that being the case, would there be any wisdom in making this document an interim document, say for a year or year and a half or whatever? And then in the, in the meantime, uh, deal with the other things that may or may not come to the surface. What are you thinking of? What would be those other things? I'm not real clear. I have no idea, but I'm guessing there's going to be some. Some other safety type things? Could be. It could be, as, as Andy's pointed out, things like uh, smoke detectors not uh, being in right which the the fire inspection uh, that should be on that list mm -hmm. it should be a standard list um jim have you have you ever um been through an interim ordinance before in in your history here with the town no yeah. but this was years ago when uh, zoning was uh catching hold in the state the the first um uh, ordinance that passed by law was interim. I can't remember if it expired in, at the end of one year or two years. I believe it was two years. And then it either had to be renewed or rewritten or combination. And um, that was common practice back in the 70s. So it, it kind of sunset. It was only good for so long. It's interesting. Sherman. I just had a question for Jim. What's the advantage of having an interim uh, 
big uh, forces. Well, well, let me yeah. finish. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was, I was <laughs> hesitating too long. <laughs> now, with the advantage of having an interim versus reviewing it at whatever time after one year and change it, changing it, if it's the change is necessary. Let Jim answer, Dana. The wisdom or the reasoning for the interim uh, for the <clears throat> back in those days was because boards were changing. People were coming on the board with different views or maybe no views at all on some of these things. So there was a pattern roadmap in place of what had to happen to a uh, regulation. Mm -hmm. In practice, there wouldn't be much difference, would there, between an interim one and, and, and another way of doing that would be a review that's set up a timetable for set up for that. Um, Dana? Best practice from a policy standpoint is that you do you do exactly what you just said, that you have whatever ordinance we have or whatever regulations we have, uh, have a time schedule. Maybe that's five years, but that way you review those to make sure that any statutory changes that are occurred <clears throat> remain relevant because the legislature is changing things. And as we saw from our subdivision ordinance that we spent quite a bit of time going through, some of those references either no longer exist or are pointed in a different direction. And so best practice would say that you set up that schedule and that this ordinance will be reviewed on such and such a, uh, a time schedule. And that, I think, would address Jim's uh, okay. Jim's concern. OK, so so that's interesting. Uh, interesting idea. Uh, what about the fees? Um, and, and the discussion Andy started. There's a there's a lot of work and some money gone into this, and I'm in agreement that there should be something going forward. At one time, I didn't think so. But when I heard there was 30 properties, 30 locations, and my guess is that uh, some of them been around for a while. And um, yeah, we just, need to cover the bases. Just anecdotally, anecdotally, um, I ran into a resident of Shrewsbury over the weekend, and they estimate they have 60 short-term rentals in Shrewsbury, um, which is a much smaller town. Um, and, uh, and it seems like they're much more noticeable, you know, maybe. In, but there's maybe. A, lot of, a lot of construction going on in Shrewsbury in the last 10 years, too. That's true. That's true. Um, okay, so there is some consensus to maybe. I, I am not recommending that uh, message I just gave you. I'm just throwing it out there as something to consider. That there'd be some fees that are left. Right. For registering. But I think uh, uh, Dana has a, a thought on that that would probably work. So we've got um, a review period um, on that we're talking about that's on the floor, and we've got maybe reducing the fees that's on the floor. Anything else? <clears throat> the question that I have, Barbara, is uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the last meeting, uh, we let the um, people in attendance know that it wasn't our decision it was the select board's decision one to e examine the ordinance right. and two they'll be the final decision looking at the ordinance for uh, for implementation and that we are doing the groundwork uh, for them and the opportunity to provide direct input is something that we should probably uh, examine from the perspective of the woman from Burlington who said that she would be uh, willing to help uh, share uh, what they have learned. And there was at least one of two people uh, present in the audience who said that they would be interested also. 
So the question that I have is, uh, would that be, and that would address the um, uh, member of the public from this evening who is wondering about whether we're doing anything from uh, from a planning commission perspective on how we're gathering additional information uh, before we make a recommendation to the select board. Unless, of course, we're making a recommendation to the select board. Yeah, we could evening. do that too, right. Right. So I, I throw that out there uh, as something. I think that was one of the uh, options mm -hmm. that you uh, had uh, identified at the outset of this discussion. And so I think that that's probably something this, this group should uh, uh, examine to determine whether uh, additional input from the, the practitioners uh, would be valuable for us to have before we make a final recommendation to the select board. Mm -hmm. Sherman? I just have a comment on that. That, that, that idea came from the the person from Burlington who said that's what they did. That's what they did. And how much value there was. And Burlington has a very involved, very sophisticated uh, ordinance uh, and with many, many details. And we have, if you think about our ordinance, it's simple. There is there is a fee that, that's paid once a year. There's a one-time uh, inspection that only, hap only happens once unless there's changes. That's it. That's the, I mean, I, and, and we, and getting back to having, getting more information. We had people here. We heard everything they said. I, 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 I mean, I think we've done our, our, our duty in, in going to the public to see what, what, what there was to do. And just my, that's just my opinion. Uh, so I'm. I'll just ask just do you have anything to say to respond to that that um, that, that, I, that we're not addressing what the public oh, sorry. Sorry. that we're not addressing what what was said the other night just to you what you just said now yeah okay. yeah um oh thank you i just have this feeling i get this feeling because i have Airbnb in my house and I just get the feeling that it's got from everybody's the way you it, it's it's just a we're the enemy if you're an Airbnb you're you're the enemy um if you're a long-term renter then then that's fine you don't have the rules and regs and ordinance and and I think the board in general has a wrong idea of what <clears throat> listening to the people from last week, what an Airbnb really is. And I think maybe one of the reasons there's more Airbnbs coming along is the same reason we we changed. We had a grandmother's apartment, our kids stay there, and we did some rent it out to friends and family. And then it got to the point where we didn't know anything about who was going to rent from us. And landlords typically don't have a lot of rights as far as you get somebody in your apartment and they trash it and you can't get rid of them and they don't pay you. So you not only lose the pay, or you, the money that you're trying to pay your taxes with, that's what we're trying to do is just pay our taxes, not make a fortune. And we don't have people there all the time. But um, Excuse me. That's why we went to short-term rental because the people on Airbnb are, you know who they are. They have to belong. They're, they're rated by their landlords. So we're rated as Airbnb hosts. And there's so many more restrictions already in place um, that you don't really have the problems that you do with long-term. And I don't know. I mean, I don't think we could probably have our Airbnb because we couldn't afford all of this and all this paperwork and everything just to have a couple people come and stay at your house every once in a while. Okay. Thank you. Know, you. That's Thank my, I, we're not the big bad guys, you know, so what if you've got 30, what difference does it make if there's not a problem and 
and nobody from last meeting was saying there is a problem, okay. but it's okay. It's like the boogeyman to everybody, and it's really not that way. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. listening. So, so Jerry, sure. Back yes, to so, um, I think that I, I completely understand the public kind of thinking that. However, for somebody who owns long-term rentals, there's a lot of money that has to be checked when it comes to the Department of Fire Safety for long-term rentals. We're, we're in the same boat. I see it firsthand. That to me, this all started out, and I might might and talking with Bill about safety. I still think that's the most important thing. I'm definitely into what everybody's echoing about, or especially Andy about the fees. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that we want to make villainize villainize the, the people of town. I, I only have one true concern here that I'll just throw out there is that in talking with Bill last week after the meeting, we were just chatting a little bit. I do have a little bit of concern about where fire safety standards may take the cost for these people. It may not take it may take next to nothing. But it could take some money to make to have them comply and, and quite a bit of it in certain cases. It's only a concern. I'm all for the ordinance. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that everyone who has these types of businesses in town should expect that they need to it's a it's a small price mm -hmm. to, for safety, in, in my opinion. So I'm all for lowering the fees. Yeah. And 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 a little bit of paperwork and a and a small fee, but I, I, I see it firsthand and I do have a concern about where fire inspections may take it. And because I don't think any of us, none of us, it's our intention to, to burden anyone in the town. No, no. And one of our intentions is to level the playing field with other commercial exactly. lodging exactly. establishments. So I, I agree they, with that. they have to make those, you know. I agree. Those. I agree. I agree with what I, I truly do with what everybody's buddy saying. I just thought I would, I would float that, that first of all, long-term rentals are required to do very similar things. So there, there shouldn't be this notion that one of them doesn't have to do it. And the short term would have to, that's not the case. And so it's not cheap. And it's not cheap. And it, they, they, I've, I've had them call and say, we're in the town of Proctor. We're coming to inspect your place. This is the day we're doing it. That can happen in any town and has happened. But the problem is, is when they have time. So, um, so it, one, one of them is similar in that respect. They, they both get inspected. Okay. Would. Uh, Norm. Yeah, I just would like to uh, clarify one thing. You were assigned this task by the select. Yes, I, I know that. And I don't believe the select board <clears throat> views the people in the business of short-term rental as bad guys. <laughs> I, I get that feeling, you know, oh, there's 30 of them springing up and oh, what if there's going to be more? I, I think as Jerry very clearly said, that this is a matter of public safety and what a national concern like Airbnb may propose may not fit some of our local experiences. And I think that's Basically, mm -hmm. well, no, the Norm, let's try to feel. Let's keep let's keep the discussion amongst ourselves. Okay, <clears throat> and and figure out where we're going. Uh, Mary Beth, you're going to tell us where we're going. Sure, I, and thank you, Jerry, because I was going to ask about long term rentals, but you beat me to it. Um, but I think. Um, it's good that we're having this discussion. I think it's worth um, meeting with the um, the people that offered to meet with us, like Dana was saying. So I think before we make any, I think that should be the first step before we um, make any recommendations or um, other significant changes, maybe meeting with a smaller group of people that offered to help out answer questions and share their experience. Okay. Um, and would you be more specific, Mary Beth, about what we would, um, how we would employ that group or what, what the goal would be? Um, let's see. Well, so for, are we allowed to have committees made up of a mix of planning commission and other people, or would it need to be 
I guess there's that minimum number needs to be warned. I'm just wondering the logistics of if we should set up a committee. It is allowed. It would most likely need to be run through the select board first. But yeah, I don't see any issue of not being able to do it if we had that approval. Mm-hmm. Um, Barbara, yeah. uh, just a, an observation to Mary Beth's uh, question. We can set up, oh, we have the authority to set up our own work groups or subcommittees. We do. The, the question then might be whether we invite other people from the public to come in and give us feedback as that committee is working, rather than going Mary Beth's route, unless, I mean, unless I misunderstood you, Mary Beth, in terms of forming a committee, perhaps, well, I'm not going to get into that. That's going down a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, um, rather than going to try and set up a committee, some kind of a standing committee <clears throat> that would be comprised of both planning commission members and, and the public be easier within our with the uh, our purview to, to set up our own committee to move this forward and invite the public to participate That's like true. we've done in the past. That's a good point, Dana. Uh, Andy. Yeah, I, I personally think that we have put together a really good ordinance here. And to me, the only the only stick point, uh, if for lack of a better term, is the, the fee the fee schedule attached to it. Uh, I don't think we need to have to do any more work on it. I I, I really think it's as, as it's definitive. It, it takes care of the safety issues, takes care of the tax issue because it requires the the uh, that the um, potential renter uh, register properly with the state and pay the rooms and meals tax. Uh, so I really think we're done here, and uh, I, I think I, I want to commend everybody for putting putting this well, thing together. And I, I think that's what we should sit on it and uh, uh, work out the fee schedule or just send it to the uh, select board with a range of fees on there because in the end, it is there going to be their decision. You make a very good point. It is uh, a lot of good work has already been put into this. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? The select board does meet next Tuesday. Uh, we don't have to have anything to bring to them, but <clears throat> it's convenient that they, they do meet in a few days. Bill? So my, my suggestion on that is if you want to send it to them, great. I think it would be at the next, on Tuesday, say, hey, we've got this wrapped up. We're going to have it on the agenda for the 20th because the agenda for Tuesday's done and out. So letting them know that it's coming for the next one and I can send it to them ahead of time so that way they have time to right. review it. But I, I I, think if we try and, they, they wouldn't make a decision on it on Tuesday. Right, anyway. the packet has gone out to yeah, them. Yeah, that's, 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 that's all done. For, but for next week, saying but... on Tuesday, hey, it's coming and we can we can give it, I can give it to them Tuesday for, the, for discussion in two weeks. Right. So um, I'd be happy to make a motion. However, I, how would we deal with that thing? I kind of agree with Andy. Do we... Do we do a range of fees and let them kind of make that decision? Do we, what does everybody feel about that? Dana? Um, I was, uh, I'm feeling like you are, um, Jerry, as well as uh, Andy, but uh, Barbara gave us three possible options. We could consider more. And so I just want to review those because that might help with whatever motion somebody wants to make. Because I, I'm using your motion guy. And I'm not clear what motion I would want to make at this point. But anyway, uh, one was that we can vote to send the ordinance as is to the um, to, to the select board. What I'm hearing is that that's really not where we're at. Two was we can edit more on the uh, the document. I guess that includes looking at the fee schedule. And then the three third one that she gave us was to set up a, a committee to, that would um, uh, help us work through the 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 process and what i'm hearing is that most people don't think that that's necessary so uh perhaps uh jerry the uh the the motion is around editing i i I don't know and what that would uh what that would look like so that we would edit one more time at another meeting and then uh do a final review to submit to the 
uh, select board. And to Bill's point, perhaps we can let the select board know that uh, at their at the meeting following our next the, the, the 20th, uh, the 20th meeting on the 20th, whatever it is, July 3rd, 22nd. No, because oh, they, they meet twice before you meet. We yeah, meet. yeah, yeah, right. So theirs would. Oh, we're we're talking about well, we we need another meeting on this. No, I, I'm. I, I know what you're thinking. So July 4th would be the next meeting, but it will not be. So it'll be the. So 18th. it's likely going to be July 3rd. But they get to decide that on Tuesday. Oh, okay. That's why it's not there yet. So my 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 point was that if if we need to edit more, the editing is probably not going to happen this evening. I mean, maybe it is. Good. Well, so far we all, we have the uh, the change to the inspection. That's all we've got. Change to the inspection and potential fee schedule adjustment. So I, I did I did some quick math. So the the when I when I was trying to co basically cover the the the, the vendor fee. That was with the 18 that I found and roughly, I think it was like 50 bedrooms. So it can absolutely come down. Like, I, and, and with the 30 at 50 bedrooms, we, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it. So it, we can do 50, 50. And, you know, I, I think it'd be, I, I, this is not meant to make money for the town. 100%. Right. That's not absolutely at all what it's going to do. So, I, I I think I would be completely comfortable saying 50 and 50. And then at the end of the year, if we want to change that, that's a, that's a, it's a 60 day amendment. And that's just a, a change that goes into effect. That's, that's not a, that's really not a big deal, but I don't think we'd be shorting ourselves. If anything, we'd be maybe short a couple hundred dollars difference, which that wouldn't have an, an impact on, on, on the town budget. On the town budget yeah. Right. Uh, Andy, I'd rather be short than over a lot. Andy's oh. got his hand up again. Yes, um, I'd just like to say I, I'm not in favor of putting anything further into a committee. I think we should just work on this in an open session the way we have been. Uh, I definitely agree with Bill. Uh, some, I, I believe, well, let me say this. I think that in within a year, you're going to see somewhere between 60 and 100 properties. I base this on the fact that on Hitzel Terrace, we know of, of three different houses that are really potentially set up for Airbnb and can easily be made into that. And I think there's um, far more as you go around the community. So I, th I think the thing to do is to have the fee structure set low enough so that people will comply and not feel that it's um, that they're being singled out uh, to pay a and what they might be viewing as an extremely high fee. And I really do feel we could work on it tonight or we could just do one more meeting, work on it and get it to the select board. Chairman. I'm, I'm with Andy. I, I think we, we have something that is understandable. I don't have any questions about it. Uh, I think it's clear. And if changes have, if there are things that have to, be changed. We can change them going forward. And am I? I'm at a point where I think, with the exception of of fees, I'm ready to send it to the select board. I don't. I don't they can I mean, always we, punt it back. We to have us. listened. To, we have asked for comments. We've received comments. We've comments we could address. We've addressed, and I'm ready to send it to the select board. Okay. Um. Still searching for a motion, Jerry. Does that help you with? Well, that? no. That that, that it, it it helped me to the point that if the if I do feel we need to address the fees, so if there's not an easy way to get to that point, perhaps that's another meeting. Perhaps that gives everybody time to think think it through. I don't know, but I, I'm if everybody if if everybody was ready to set a fee schedule, I'm pretty much ready. I think we've done. We've done a good job. I think we're in a good, good spot. We've had we've had a good amount of time to reflect yeah. on this. We, we've, as well. we've done well. I think it's it's simple. I really agree with Sherman. It's it's really pretty easy to understand. If we don't over overburden people and and the safety is addressed, that's important. We're, sure. That's where we're headed. I think. Sure. I don't know if I can get this together, but I will make a motion. <laughs> I will move. I I move that we reduce the fees to fifty dollars instead of a hundred dollars, and that. We send this to the select board with our recommendation that this is, and this, this is being the the latest draft, the latest draft. This is what we've done. This and and with with 
just some of the some examples of comments that we received when we had uh, a meeting here about it. So the select board understands the comments that we received, the, the, the nature of the comments it received. Okay. Does that include, uh, Sherman, as a friendly amendment, the uh, recommendation to um, paragraph 10 uh, under section six regarding the um, uh, the frequency of- It does, inspection. it does, okay. the, the frequency of Including inspection. inspection yes. Vote. I'll second that motion then. Okay. Discussion. Mary Beth. Um, I take back what I said about the committee. I agree with what you guys are saying about sending it to the select board. I mean, it's a seven page document and agree that it's clear and spend, you know, spending much more time on it. I don't think would be that much of a benefit. And we, you know, the select board can review what we have and they can always have comments. And so I, support the motion to send it the way it is with the changes suggested. Okay, I think Norm was first. Just want to make sure I understand the motion. The fee is the the $50 fee is the application fee, the registration fee. Re registration. registration fee. Yeah. Right. 15 and, 50. Section right. And, and $50 per bedroom. Right. Per bedroom. Yes, 50. So it's so cutting those two yeah, fees in. Next yeah. Absolutely. No yeah, so it's that it's the section 6 um, change so that there's one initial fire safety inspection and only one, and only one. unless and only one unless right. the change of hands or and, and the other changes like. the town attorney made from the last draft. One thing I, I, I will probably suggest is the the adoption and effective date paragraph is the standard one we use. The effective date we would probably specify is sometime more than sixty days out because there's no way to get those inspections lined up in time. No, no way. Right. So we, that would be, that would be, we, we'd run into a horrible regulatory problem at that point. We, so. Well, most ordinances don't even cite a, a, a date. To, I mean, it, no, it just well, goes no, to no, effect. It says it's becomes effective 60 days from, from the date the select board adopts it. So that's 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 the the period where there, there's the the public coming. So you're you're saying that's not going to be possible. I'm saying we I'm saying we we would we should talk about a date that's like I'm thinking maybe like July first of of twenty four, because we want to make sure everybody that has one knows about it. Mm -hmm. So it gives them the opportunity yeah. a, a a long time. So I think inspection that. The, there's no, no the first registration would not be due until July 1st of 2024 and that gives plenty of time to work through schedules and things like that so and, and so, get the inspection you're right yeah. And, so, and, yeah I'm sorry but we want to get the motion. yeah so that's in section 10 so uh, does the maker of the no, the motion I, I agree to I that, agree with that. Yeah. and the seconder of yes, the maker I would um, accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay, any any other discussion? We have a motion on the floor. Does everybody understand? Uh, we didn't address the uh, review of it. Um, I think, I, I, I believe the select board is gonna, I, I believe we're giving them a great document and then, then they could review it, correct? I mean, they could choose to review it in, in a year or spit it back to us or whatever, so. I think I think as it stands, the select board has an additional uh, charge to us that will come back, and it still would I think meet uh, Bill's uh, suggested timeline of uh, of an implementation date of July one a year from now. So I I, I think we would have ample time to be able to uh, do any additional review the select board would ask us to do. And presenting it to the select board, we we could we could say that that this is this is a first. We've done it, and we realize that there may be cause going forward to change it, and we're ready to discuss it when there's an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, for voting purposes, uh, neither alternate um, would be voting since we have got a full slate here tonight. Um, 
Are we ready for the vote? One clarification question as per our operating procedures. Uh, Bill does need to indicate the roll call vote since two of our members voting are adjoining via Zoom. Um, that's only if it's not unanimous. If I it's believe. not unanimous, right. Yeah. Okay. Which we don't know. Uh, well, right. <laughs> it's in anticipation of vote. But yeah. I just... <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll do the question. All those in favor of sending the draft ordinance to the select board with the changes we've been talking about in the last few minutes. Please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, no roll call is needed. The votes are known. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll, I'll bring it up next, next Tuesday, but it will be formally presented to the select board on the 20th, the 20th yeah. of June. <coughs> okay. Good. Um, I, I think we've, in old business, I think we've done the second item pretty much, review comments from the public. On, on the ordinance, unless anyone else wants to make sure that a particular comment gets relayed to the select board. Or if you just uh, want Bill and I to pull something together. Okay. Don't we already have information that was recorded in the minutes about the uh, processing of that? Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know that there's any other purpose that we would have tonight to, to revisit that, is there? Yeah, I think I just put it in the uh, the agenda just in case we want we needed to refer back to some of the comments. But I, I think we all I think we're all pretty fresh in our memory. Okay, uh, down to the um, town administrator report on Act Two Fifty applications. There's a few of them out there. There's two at the moment. Uh, one GMP file for work on the Penn Stock, the big pipeline north of Park. They're dealing, they're dealing with the follow-up on that. Um, that's kind of a formality, but hopefully they get done soon. The other and more exciting one is uh, the redevelopment of the Friendly's property. Uh, that has been fully submitted. Um, I don't know if they've heard back on it's been accepted yet or not, but um, that is going to be a complete teardown and rebuild. And Mary found out, I haven't seen it yet, but she has found out that uh, it is going to be an additional Starbucks location. Uh, and that's going to have a much better traffic flow. <laughs> um, but they've, they've done a lot of work to that. It's going to be, they're going to completely renovate the whole site and start over again. So that's in there right now. So we've signed off on our questionnaire and that's, that's off and running. So. And the car wash one, that's a little bit that's, farther South. It, it, where does that stand? The eco uh -huh. car wash? Um I don't have anything official on that yet. It's the building's down, which was is great. I don't know what I don't know where they're at in their process right now. I don't I don't have anything official on that. So and that was the former um ground round. Ground round, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, the what? Ground, ground round. round. Yeah. So that's okay. Yes. Yeah. Some activity in town. Um I've missed a couple of select board meetings. Um anything that we should report out? to this group no it's been pretty good uh the the um subdivision ordinance it, kevin has it that's the that's the short and sweet answer at this moment um there's been he, he was he was working on this the short-term rental ordinance for us he got that to us there's another thing that he he has to work on for us in in, in front of this so that's what he's doing between now and the board meeting hopefully after the board meeting we'll be good and he can continue on this i don't I don't know. I asked him for a, 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 if we don't hold to a timeline and he couldn't even give me one. So I, I don't know yet how long it's going to be, but he, yeah. he has everything. He has the three versions, the change list. He has, he has it all. So <laughs> he's fully, fully informed. Okay. Well, at least he got back to us quickly on the short-term rentals, I guess. Okay. Uh, announcements and news. Um, the joint, Energy Committee 
we haven't been able to set a date. Um, and um, in regards to the town-wide celebration, uh, we're still working on energy components of that, but I don't see that in, in any of the publicity for the celebration yet. I, when we had to get it out, so there's there's some flyers that we made, but certainly we, that's why the, there's the and more. <laughs> we'll call it the and more. Um, but I, 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 we want to give it to the school for four kids go out, and I have to get them printed, and it's a whole thing. So it's, okay, that's that's right. Now. But certainly, all the, all the online stuff will reflect that. But yeah, that's that's something we we and it, you know, there's space there, so we can we can get that in. No problem. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have same sun as another display. And actually, they have some some a uh, package, if you want to call it a deal, for Rutland County residents until the end of August. So they're like, "Oh, okay, we can we can certainly promote that." Um, so we got same sun. Um, I'm going to go to the town school science fair. I think it's Wednesday, and see if any of the kids want to any you know if they want to bring their exhibits, their their whatever um to to the celebration um electric bikes uh, i don't think we'll be able to do much with that um we don't have we don't have a, a partner with that and and northwood park has now prohibited on the trails on the trail on the trails but paved areas fine. are fine okay yeah. okay we'll see if Maybe we can work something out. Maybe we can work something. So hopefully we can get a meeting. I'll I'll put another. I'll send another email out to Mary. And is Joe part of that group now? Yeah, I don't know either. He he, he was sent. He was he was forwarded the you know. <gasps> Mary asked him when can he meet. Like, he, probably, he probably is. We get to find Jim. What's what's the date again for the August nineteenth Saturday August nineteenth ten to two. Next time you guys meet off some beautiful flyers in the hallway, so don't worry. Okay. And the fireworks are the second. Second, yes. Okay. Any other announcements or news to share? What was that? August what? The town nineteenth is the townwide celebration, and the fourth of July is July second. The fireworks. Fireworks is July second. Fourth of July is on July fourth. <laughs> Chairman. There's a, a question. Do, do we plan to do the subdivision updates to review them? Yeah. Up there with Kevin. Bill just Kevin kind of does that. The town attorney yeah. has them. Oh, all right. So we're, we're, now we're just waiting for them to come back. I don't I don't anticipate them being we're, soon. We're treading water still. Okay. I didn't understand. I, I Yeah. I, did I think we've done everything we can with them. Okay. And we need his help to polish it up. Okay, let's go to the minutes of May 11th. Move to approve the minutes of May 11th. <clears throat> Second. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, there was one uh, typo that I think uh, needs to be addressed, even though it's a small one, only because of the readability and what it means on page three. Um, uh, top of the page under paragraph two, uh, it begins with a question was asked on our vendor ordinance. I think it's supposed to be if a yard sale required a permit. And uh, so uh, we, we can just write that in, Barbara, or whatever, um, rather than having Bill go back and change the whole thing. But uh, that was my for readability, I, I thought that needed to be changed because I had to read it a couple of times to figure out what it was saying. Came up with it was if. Anything else? Is it, yeah, one question. I understand what vendor means. But I think in the context of the sentence, it might be clear to say an outside company. That's, that's specified in the ordinance, though. Vendor? Yes. The word is? Yes. Okay. 
it's a very it's a very long definition so i don't we don't want we don't want to put oh, okay <laughs> fine. <laughs> fine. we'll give norm a couple seconds to specify that our proposed <laughs> ordinance vendor you need a motion to adjourn? Not yet. Until we vote on the ordinance. Yeah. We're talking about the pedal and vendor, the vendor ordinance, the separate ordinance altogether. Our vendor is not in this. What ordinance are you looking at? I don't know. I'm Where looking at the minutes, and okay. it says under public comment on the draft short term rental. Okay. And the last line on last paragraph on page one, last sentence, it says a vendor would likely be hired but at a cost of approximately $3,000. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And it's it just isn't clear. An outside um, company would be hired to... A vendor, yeah. That's what we call them. A vendor. Yeah. All right. If that's what you call it... Then no, that's, that's what we call. I think that's pretty standard, Norm. Okay. Instead of adding personnel, we would hire somebody. <laughs> oh, I, to I understand. Okay. That's... I just didn't know whether the public would understand. Okay. Or... Mm -hmm. okay. So I will, if I, if I may, unless there's other discussion, I would um, make an amendment to my own motion to accept the minutes uh, with that one change. A second. Tough decision. It was hard. <laughs> Struggled. Okay, all those in... Oh, Andy. Oh, could we... Love that change, hand. I, it's I would suggest this change on the on that thing. A vendor to um, monitor short-term rental sites would likely be hired. That way it defines who the vendor is. Uh, okay, repeat that. You broke up a little bit. A vendor to... Monitor short-term rental site, short-term rental websites. At websites. Uh, All right. Uh, I, I, if you want to specify, I would say to help identify short-term yes. rental properties. Yes, yeah, that makes don't, me much more confident. That's, yeah, it, it's fine. Specify it, but yeah, let's do because they would be hired to help identify short-term rental properties in town. Yeah, that's excellent. I agree, Andy. Okay, how about the makers of the motion? I will amend my motion to accept <laughs> the changes, uh, the minutes as amended. <laughs> Second. Okay, so we just have those two changes, right? Yep. One on page three, and the one on page one. Okay, ready for the motion? Yep. All those in favor of the amendments, uh, <laughs> the minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Okay. I'll leave those here for Bill. And. Yeah, I'll motion to adjourn. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll second. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You get it. If it's required, yeah, I'll yes. say. We're adjourned. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.